Ryan, it's the final event of what has been an incredible season. How does it feel being here in Dubai and being in the position that you're in as well? A uh, bit surreal, to be honest. I mean, if you'd have said this at the start of the year, I probably wouldn't have believed you, but um, it's been an amazing season and you know, hopefully I can finish it off this week. But you know, regardless of what happens, I'm, I'm really proud of what I've done this year and it's been a fun ride. When we spoke at the Dunhill, you'd cut the gap to Rory to just over 1,000 points. You've had some great form since then, and now the gap is just 128 points. How much is that playing on your mind going into uh, tomorrow's first round? I mean, it's look, the goal going into last week was definitely to cut the gap, and um, you know, I couldn't have wished for a better week in that sense, especially around a golf course that I haven't done very well around last week. But um, I'm not trying to think about it too much. I mean, you know, Rory's the best player in the world. He's, um, you know, he's obviously the favourite, but to be in this position is great and I've got nothing to lose this week so I won't do anything different from what I've been doing all year just go out and try to beat the golf course and, and see what happens in that sense and that served me pretty well and hopefully I can do the same thing this week and playing the first round with Rory am I right in saying this is the first time you'll have played together yeah um, I'm looking forward to it obviously you know, he, he is the best player in the world so to, to play with the number one is always always special um, I've heard from plenty of guys on, on tour you know, he, he's a great guy and just hope he doesn't bring the rugby up too much in the first couple of holes. Thanks, Ryan. We'll go to questions, please. I will start with Joy. Ryan, uh, I remember talking to you after Abu Dhabi and early in the year, and you were not really happy with your game that at that moment. I think you finished 60th or 61st in that tournament. And then something happened. I mean, you finished Dubai. You missed the cut in Russell Kema. What happened after that? What happened after that missed cut? Um, to be fair, that missed cut, I was struggling with the back a little bit. Um, just something locked up on me, and my physio came out that week and had a little bit of work done by, oh, the, sorry, the following week, I had a little bit of work done by the European Tour physios, and I actually felt like the game wasn't too far away. I'd played relatively well in Dubai, you know, minus a few holes here and there, and um, obviously something clicked that week. Body felt really good, and just felt like I, I got out of my own way really nicely, and um, yeah. I think I got a lot out of out of that second week in rack, you know, coming that last round with a six shot lead, you know, all you're thinking is don't mess it up basically and to, to come out of that relatively unscathed and, and get the win sort of I think that helped a lot confidence wise and um, you know, it was nice to take that into the rest of the season and after that I felt a whole lot more comfortable in that situation and you know get another win at Dunhill was amazing and you know I arguably could have got a couple more as well but it's pretty hard to win out here and um, you know to put myself in, in that position as many times as I have done this year is, is pretty cool and um, hopefully I can do the same thing again this week. And I must ask you, you were very philosophical about not making it to the President's Cup team but looking back at it, is that the only, I mean is that the biggest regret that you could not play in the President's Cup uh, during the yeah, not. I mean, I'd love to have made the team, obviously, but um, you know, I left it, I left it open to to someone else's discretion, and you know, I can understand why Trevor didn't pick me. I didn't play a whole lot in the lead up, and he um, sort of out of sight, out of mind in that regard. And I think it was just nice for my peace of mind. You know, the the last few weeks that if I had got picked. You know, I, I felt like I would have been able to contribute. You know, I was still in decent form, and um, you know, it's just something to work towards in, for a couple of years' time in Canada. Yeah, I'd, I'd spoken to Trevor a little bit, um, and you know, I did get a call saying, you know, it was really, cl it was a really close run race, but you did make the team, and I appreciated that. Um, yeah. It, it's nice to be in the equation against something at the start of the year I probably didn't quite think was was a chance. But, um, yeah, as I said, it's, it's kind of motivation for a couple of years' time to try to make the team properly. Ryan, when you, when you talk about equations, you know, you, as you know, everyone knows, if you do win this week, you can go to, well, to number one in the DP World Championship. And, and in that regard, have you had any messages from Cambo, who did it a few years ago? Um, I haven't checked my New Zealand phone, so I actually don't know, to be honest. Um, which would be some achievement, the two years to do two Kiwi guys to win the Order of Merit. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Um, 
I mean, yeah, we've had a pretty good run for in New Zealand golf this year, obviously, with Steve Alka winning. I was going to ask you about Steve. Um, couple, well, last week, and Lydia's got a chance to win this week as well. So um, that'd be it'd certainly like, be a nice trifecta if we can manage it, but yeah. just to just to have that opportunity is great. And, yeah. um, you know, Cambo's an idol of mine in that sense. You know, I grew up watching a lot of golf. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, he stopped the nation pretty much in, in 2005 when he won the US Open. So, um, yeah, to, to follow him would be pretty cool. That's what I was going to ask you, just to sort of, the, the New Zealand golf is riding a crest of a wave at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, we are. It's really nice. I mean, obviously, Lydia's been a phenomenal player for a yeah. long time. Um, and, you know, she probably had a little bit of dip in form as happens. And you know it's great to see her bounce back so so strongly this year. Um, I mean, Steve Alka's story has been unbelievable. To I think what Monday qualifying to his first Champions Tour event and yeah. turn that into winning the Charles Schwab Cup. What was it four or five wins now? And yeah. I don't know how many top tens. Probably too many to, to count. I mean, that's such a cool story, and he's inspired a lot of people back home as as has Lydia. And um, you know. It'd be, as I said, it'd be nice if we could create a little bit of golf history for New Zealand and, and win three order of merits in the same year. But um, you know, regardless, it's it's. I think golf at home's riding a really nice wave. Did you catch a video of Steve drinking out of the trophy on Sunday night? I didn't actually, but um, it wasn't made to hold fluids. <laughs> Hello, Ryan. I'm Romain Lefebvre from L'Equipe. Um, a question about Rory and um, um, his investment on and off the course to. Uh, after a difficult year for golf, for the world of golf, what do you think about this, this, uh, his voice as a world number one? Are you uh, proud to have a world number one who tried to defend the, the, the world of golf like he does? Yeah, I, I mean, he's, I think he's been really thoughtful this year with what he said. Um, and yeah, it, it's great to have someone like him. Uh, he's a great ambassador for the game. Um, you know, if, again, I don't know him very well, but for all accounts, he's a really nice guy as well, which is, uh, you know, that's fantastic for for golf in general. And, you know, he's, it's like he's taken the whole thing on his shoulders this year and, and defended the establishment in that regard. And, um, you know, I think he's he's done a, a pretty damn good job of it. I don't, you know, it's, obviously the world of golf's a bit messy at the moment and um, we need some common sense in there and I feel like Rory, for the most part, has been that, that voice of common sense. Thanks. Jamie, thanks. Ryan, did you ever think you'd see the day when New Zealand are better than golf than rugby union? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would come somewhere. Um, we're, we're all right at rugby at the moment, but we're a little bit inconsistent. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's been, as I said, it's been a great year for New Zealand golf, and long may that continue. And... I certainly hope the All Blacks find some form before the World Cup in France next year. But um, on the rugby sense, I think next year's World Cup is going to be probably one of the most interesting ones we've had. I think there's five or six teams that could win it and another couple of teams that could certainly scare one of the top teams and knock them out pretty early. So uh, hopefully I get to see a couple of those games next year. And um, I'd, I'll be trying to watch the game on the weekend. Hopefully we can get England at Twickenham. That's always a nice scalp to have. Um, just as you, you're in the world top 25 now, obviously, but will there be nerves when you play with Rory? Yeah, there's definitely nerves. Um, you know, obviously, I, I'm assuming we'll have a pretty big crowd out there, which will be nice. And um, but that's what you play golf for. And, you know, you want to be in those big groups. And um, you know, I've, it's cool this year, and the fact I've earned, I, you know I've earned the right to be there, and um, I try try to enjoy it as much as I can, and, and hopefully continue the the good form. Um, you know, I've obviously played in a few decent groups and been in contention a lot this year so and handled that pretty well. So hopefully nothing changes in that respect on Thursday. I'm going to Dean, please. Ryan, when you look back at the year, you've had the wins, the close calls, the injuries. How proud are you to be in this position with a chance to, to win the rankings at the end of it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a funny year in that regard. Obviously, I hurt my knee at Wentworth and had a little bit of a back issue earlier in the year at that first rack event. But um, yeah, I mean, it, this year has been surreal in that respect, and and pretty, well, I, I couldn't be more proud of what's happened this year. You know, to, the goal at the start of the year was just to get another win under the belt, and I guess the the goal probably for the last five six years on tour has been to try to get in the top fifty, and um, you know I've cemented my place in there now for a little while, which is really cool and um, 
yeah, to, to be in this position this week and, and have a chance to win the Order of Merit is amazing. And, uh, yeah, I've, as I said earlier, I've got kind of nothing to lose in that respect. So I go out and give it a crack and see what happens. It's, it's kind of a nice place to be. And as always with these things, there's different permutations, obviously, in winning the rankings. Do you think that might take over your mindset come Sunday, depending on what position you're in? I mean, I'd like to say no, but I, I think it, there'll definitely be a little bit of it there. But um, I've done a really good job this, this year of not thinking about any of the external stuff, just go out. And the, pretty much my plan every week has been to try to beat the golf course. And that's going to be the, the goal again this week, go out, try to pick apart this golf course and see the best way to beat it. And um, if it all turns out right at the end of the week, then I'll have given myself a chance. If not, I can still be incredibly proud of, of the year I've had and, and you know, not winning the order of merit's not going to be the end of the world to me in that sense. Okay, we'll finish with John, please. Uh, Ryan, your, your dad was uh, pretty good at focusing in big moments. Uh, is there any advice that you've sought from him? Not necessarily just this week, but in general? <laughs> Not necessarily this week, but uh, you know, Dad caddied for me a lot when I was coming through. Um, I, I think he spent two or three years pretty much caddying for me in every amateur event, even stuff in the States and in Australia. And so I learned a lot from him um, in that regard. You know, he, he was, oh, I feel like goal kicking was very similar to, to golf. You know, it's, it's you, that ball doesn't move. You've got far too much time to think about it. And he was, he was really good in those moments. So it's, you know, it's, it felt like I had a sports psych in my corner early on without s sort of the terminology in that regard. And, you know, I think as most father and sons have, we've had a few disagreements along the way. But overall, um, you know, I learned a lot from Dad and, can th you know, it, it certainly helped a lot on the pathway to where I am now. Probably the, the, the biggest thing I got from Dad overall was, it's, it's not really a quote, but it was he was always, as long as you work to be the best you can be whatever happens doesn't really matter you know if you don't succeed but you've you've tried your best and become the best person you can be then you can live with that and um took a while for me to probably understand that properly but you know he's right in that regard you know you it's it's easy to if you've done everything you can it's easy to live with yourself in that regard and that's uh, yeah I've, I've tried to do that as much as possible and um Probably the one thing we disagreed on a lot is Dad was very analytical. And I found golf really hard to be analytical. If I thought about why I missed a shot one way, I completely lost the plot. So we kind of, we had a little bit of a, a, cut, a, a little while there we were trying to get on the same wavelength. So I felt like we maybe maybe learnt a little bit off each other in that regard. But, you know, Dad's, as I said, Dad's been massively helpful, massively supportive of, of anything I've tried to do. And um, it's you know, been cool to have him as part of the journey. So we'll go to Joy for one last question. Ryan, if, if there's one part of the game, or, uh, I'm sure there are many, but if there's one part of the game where you, where you can put a finger on, saying that this is the one that I really improved upon this year and helped me reach here, number two, what would that be? I'd say it would be the, the putting. I mean, I think if you look at my stats, year on year, I was probably down near near the bottom in the putting stats for the year and I think this year I'm sitting inside the top th top 50 at least and that's you know, you know they always say the old saying drive a show putt for dough kind of thing that's I always felt like if I could at least get to be an average putter I'd probably give myself a few more chances to win and, and be a bit more consistent and I've probably improved beyond that this year I felt like most weeks I've actually been a relatively good putter and now that's been huge coming down the stretch, making important putts and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that, that's probably the biggest change. But every other bit of the game's kind of improved as well, which has been nice. Is, did, the, did you do something special for the putting which has shown up this year? Not really. I mean, I, I the, probably the biggest thing I did is, is move to the arm lock a couple of years ago. And that I feel like that was a really good move. It took a bunch of rotation out of my stroke which I always struggle with and made it a lot more consistent from from shorter range and um, it's probably taken a couple of years to really understand how that worked and you know this year kind of kind of figured it out properly but I'd certainly had in the last couple of years I've certainly had better weeks after putting it in and I just hadn't found the consistency with it and this year I, I managed to find the consistency with it which is nice.
Thanks, everyone. Ryan, thank you for your time in during no the problem. week. Cheers. Thanks, guys.